Um, just to write your own custom message. We've got a couple drop downs. Um, one thing that's one thing that makes this real easy, uh, as we all know, you know, sales usually answers any email you send, and you know, HR, right? So if you're starting engagement and you really wanna you really wanna get realistic, you know, you can send out an email to HR or to sales. They'll come back and you'll maybe see the company logo and you get that format, right? So that that adds a lot of validity and trust to these type of attacks. Um, so you can import that in here as well. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to, you know, just put something in there, there's a couple little different things, you know. Um, could be a fake magazine, it could be a survey, it could be something like that. And the scenarios, um, again, this is stuff that I've seen that, that works really well. Third party technical company, I mean, it's really easy to call up and say, hey, I'm Tom or I'm Bill from so and so magazine. And uh, we're just doing a little survey, you know. Well, you know, I, who do you guys use for your tech? Who's your tech company? What kind of what kind of uh, products do you use? <laughs> Appreciate it, Tom. Um, the the auditor the auditor works as well. I got to I don't it, I didn't get any trouble doing it, but I had this idea about going out and saying, you know, when I did a little bank work, saying that I was the FFIEC auditor, you know, made this nice uh, badge up. Joshua Perryman, Chief Inspector, it was all BS, but <laughs> I didn't think and I talked about it in this press release. Oh, I pissed some people off. I had so many people come back saying, you know, oh, you can't do that and you can't do this, you can't say you're FFIC, and I was like, well, I mean, what are the bad guys going to do? You know, uh, the bad guys aren't going to play by the rules. But anyway, I took that out of here. Uh, so that won't actually be in, in the real version. Uh, let's see, stealth options. Um, obviously, I don't want to release this thing turnkey out in the wild and just just have it go. So, I'm going to add there's things we add into the email, so it would be picked up. You know, hopefully, it would break. Even even Outlook spam would pick it up, just because it's that broken. Um, we also want to add some stuff in there, to, you know, some tags to let it know where it came from. Kind of like, you know, most scanning, application scanning tools like Grindle scans, things like that. If you look in the header, you know, it says right, tool, tool name. So we want to do the same thing with this. Um, but, you know, there's some options there. We can add some custom stuff to the, he the email headers. This is the cool part. This is what makes the tool cool. Uh, after DEF CON, I decided that I want to kind of put this thing together. I've been for years, I've got a couple of these little ideas, and I had the great, before I moved to Australia, I had the great idea of thinking, hey, I'm going to make billions. I'm going to have all these great commercial products, and I'm going to do this, but the damn things never got done. They have sat there and sat there and sat there, and I didn't talk about them because I want to make money off of them. So I've kind of changed that around now. What I wanted to do is release this because I just feel that organizations need to have the ability to test themselves for this. Most pen testing firms are not doing it. I mean, there's one commercial company that does it, and I think they're okay. Um, but you really don't have anything custom like a, a penetration tester would use that you can add different stuff to. Anyway, um, so here's the cool part about this thing. Uh, again, we talked about email being the transport or the attack vector. That's how we get the attacks into the network, right? Um, it's the same thing as Net Metasploit. Metasploit uses the network to get the payloads. We use email to get the payloads in there. So here are the payloads. Spear phishing obviously is the number one use for this tool. But that's not the only thing it can be used for. Um, what if we added browser exploits, or cross-site scripting, or cross-site request forgery, um, or recon? You know, we can do recon if you didn't know IP addresses, but you knew an uh, email. You can look at the read receipts. You can look at the headers. You can get, you know, you then know where that's from. So this is something. Anytime I do a a, a hack, and they're like, "Oh, we're not going to give you our you know, IP addresses. We're not going to give you anything. We'll just tell you our company name." It's a great way. You know, send an email. Look at the email they sent you. It's going to show, you know, it's going to show information in there that will let you know where they're at. Anyway, uh, so you can add browser exploits. You can do cross-site scripting. Uh, another one of my favorites is downloading the, uh, an executable tool. Say, say you want to build your own installer. Well, sure, great. Brand it up. Make it look nice. just like the company. You know, hey, click the new update. Um, but what you do is you can have those run in action, right? So you have Netcat outbound or something like that, or you, you can install something on there. Um, but that kind of stuff can be loaded as a payload. Um, but the, the majority of stuff is going to be the spear phishing. Uh, 
Yeah, so I missed this point. So this, this obviously, again, I want to focus on the part that I am not a developer. <laughs> I know a little bit of web design. So this is my attempt at the hack, what I call the uh, hack 2.0 tool, right? It looks neat. It's easy to use, you know. Um, it's a little different feel, look and feel, than your normal tool. All right, test environment. So we've logged in. We set the client up. Um, we've done the email recon we, or entered the emails. We've selected what bait or what, you know, the phishing site we're going to put up. All that's done. Now is the time that we actually test this. So this is how I think it needs to be released, really, a, a local mode, right? So the Lunker PHP Meller, it would have maybe a hard-coded email address or something like that in there. And it would send it locally, so your local mail server. So that's sent and it's stored locally. So in the, in the test mode, the user would come in and say launch something like Thunderbird or a, an email client that we're going to set up. So they can actually see the attacks come in. So you, you, you set it up in the tool, you send it out. In real time, bam, you see it come into your little email client there. So you can see how this stuff works. But that's what the test environment's for, right? So you, you test sending that because one, usually one misspelled word or something, you know, the address, it don't have to be re real detailed, but you really want to make sure and test this before you send it out because if they start second thinking it, you know, it, that might be the time when they say, oh, I'm not going to log in. But the most effective uh, attacks are obviously the ones that are really well edited. Local mode. All right. So, start the audit. After everything's sent out, there's a, like a status screen, right? So we want to know uh, Apache's up, MySQL's up, the mail server's working. Um, yes, we, we verified the target list, the phishing site's going, you know, spoofed email verification. Everything's good to go. So this just kind of lets us know where we're at. So when we get ready to, to submit the uh, tag, we'll make sure all this stuff's up and running. So once that's done, you just click on it and it gets sent out. So then there's a couple options for that as well. You can send them all at once, but what I found usually works best is, it, it works best is to send a couple different uh, groups out. So, um, but at the same time, you don't want to stretch it out too far sometimes because if the first people see it and they pick up on it and start calling tech support, you know, um, it, it'll affect the other users. So, I mean, it just really depends on your environment, I guess how do you want to send it out, but there's options in that. So once it's done, you just kind of sit there and wait. And this is, the tool's got some monitoring options uh, and timers, um, things that you won't see like in commercial versions. Um, what we like to do is, once it's clicked out, we want to know, okay, when, say, the attack was sent at 12 o'clock. So when we know that, we know we can start timing how long it takes for other users to come in. And if they come in twice, you know, some certain things like that we want to trigger alarms on. Um, another, okay, okay, so the login options, once it's sitting there waiting, we're getting, we're getting, start getting uh, emails to come in to our phishing site, uh, there's a couple things we can do, we can just capture them, we can capture and log in, or the real cool part is like a capture login with scrape, we'll talk about that in a second, so what's next? Um,